and tone days are just part of the process of developing as a flute player, but hopefully these tips will help you work through your next one. Hi everyone, I'm Alex the Flute Nerd and today I'm going to be talking about bad tone days. Ever have one of those days where your sound is rubbish? Yeah, we all get these bad tone days and trust me, they can be frustrating especially if you haven't yet developed an arsenal of tricks to help or what I like to call bad tone day busters. But here's the deal, bad tone days are just part of the process. They can happen for loads of different reasons and some of those can be out of our control. For example, stress at work or maybe a swollen lip from accidentally biting it while eating your dinner. Anyone else? Just me? So of course we work hard in our everyday flute practice to ensure that we improve our tone as much as possible, but these dreaded bad tone days will still happen, so it's worth knowing how to navigate them. In this video, I'll talk about what causes bad tone days and share some of my favorite bad tone day quick fixes. But first, let's have a closer look at what a bad tone day is. This refers to the time when our sound isn't what we know we're capable of. In other words, it's not as good as it usually is. Your tone might be breathy or thin, lacking resonance, or maybe certain registers are causing you trouble. Bad tone days can sneak up on us for a variety of reasons, but here are just a few of the main culprits. Stress and tension. This can often come from things that are within our control, like a tense embouchure, but sometimes it's stuff we can't change, like work or general life stress, and these can have a subconscious effect on our bodies. Dry or chapped lips is another one that I personally struggle with, so make sure that you keep some lip balm handy. And let's not forget about the technical stuff. A leaky pad can wreak havoc on your tone, so make sure you take good care of your instrument and get it regularly checked. Here's a surprising one. Don't forget that your ears often get better before you do. This is super common. You learn what you want to sound like before you're physically capable of making that sound. And that might be why you feel a bit bummed about your sound today. Identifying the culprit behind your bad tone day will help you know how to focus your practice and which of the following exercises you should work on. So without further ado, here are some of my favorite bad tone day busters. On days I'm struggling, I will often run through several of these, but on others, one exercise might be enough to put my sound back on track. Experiment with all of them and have fun. One of my favorite quick fixes is singing and playing. This is exactly what it sounds like. You sing or hum a note while playing the flute. If you struggle to do both at the same time, try alternating between them and then speeding that up until you're doing both at the same time. This exercise is great for relaxing any tension in your throat, neck, or jaw that might be causing your tone issues. It also helps us find much more resonance in the sound. Another exercise that will often fix bad tone days like magic is flutter tonguing. This is when you roll your R's and play at the same time. <laughs> But if you can't roll your R's, you can try gargling in the back of your throat, which has a similar effect. Flutter tonguing will help relax any tension in your tongue and open your nasal cavity, which will help improve your sound. But I have also found it useful in finding a perfect embouchure shape. If I'm not directing the air exactly where it needs to go or I'm too tight in my embouchure, I'll struggle to make a good flutter tongue. Harmonics are another great tool we have to help fix bad tone days. Harmonics are simply when we overblow a note and when we do this, we'll hear a precise series of intervals above that original note, which is also called a fundamental. For example, here is the harmonic series on a low C fundamental. <laughs> Because the harmonic series moves through all of the registers, this is a great way to correct your air direction and air speed for each register. As you play each harmonic, try to make it as clear as if you were playing the real fingering, and that requires your air speed and air direction to be just right for that particular note. And make sure that you hold each harmonic. You're trying to demonstrate control over your air speed and direction, not just blowing and hoping for the best. If you're struggling to find the tonal center of a sound, you can't be using some breath articulation. Breath articulation is when you start notes with a ha or a hu sound, not using the tongue. Each articulation should use lots of support so it should feel like you're laughing. Ha, 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 ha. If your air 
inflection is slightly off, your notes will crack. So make sure that you listen very carefully and try to find the center of the sound for each one of those notes. You can take this idea up another level by articulating with your lips using a French-like P sound. This one is harder, but it does wonders to your sound. Pitch bending can also be really useful for bad tone days. This requires an extremely flexible embouchure, so it's good for loosening any tension you might have in the lips. When you're bending the notes, try to make sure that you're not rolling the flute in or out. That doesn't work on our embouchure, and we don't want to be messing around with our pitch by rolling in or out. That's a lot of hard work. Instead, frowning and covering more of the embouchure hole with the lip will bend the pitch down, and smiling and pulling the lip away from the embouchure will bend the note up. Try pushing each note to its extreme, both sharp and flat. Aim for at least 20 cents in either direction, but how far can you go? Can you bend it a half a step? What about a whole minor third? Don't forget to check your posture as this can also have a huge impact on our sound. You want to make sure that you're standing or sitting nice and tall and that you're not crunching in on yourself. And you also want to make sure that your chin is not tucked as all of these will affect our airstream. We want an uninhibited air column for our best sound. Also check that your shoulders are relaxed and not up by your ears and that your elbows are floating rather than way up in the air or squeezed really tight into your body. The more tension we hold in our bodies, the less resonant we will sound. We obviously have to have some tension or else we just drop the flute, but we don't want to add any extra unnecessary tension. It's always a good idea to have a mirror around as you practice so that you can keep an eye on these things. Sometimes bad tone days might not be about your technique, but could be a problem with your flute. You know what they say, a good craftsman doesn't blame their tools, but occasionally those tools need a tune up. If you're struggling with your sound, but none of the other tricks are helping, check for the usual suspects, a faulty cork, leaky pad, damaged keys, or loose joints. All of these can lead to tone issues. This is yet another good reason to make sure you're taking good care of your flute, cleaning it after every practice, carefully handling and storing it, and making sure that it gets some TLC from a good repair technician every year. Finally, sometimes we just have to give in. There are gonna be some days where none of these tricks work, and no matter what you do, you just can't shake the bad tone day. We've all been there, and every now and then, we have to just surrender to the bad tone day, especially if it's caused by factors outside of our control, like stress at work. Instead of wrestling with your tone, why not shift gears? Change your focus to work on finger technique exercises or practice through some complicated rhythms. This will mean that you still get valuable practice time in, but will stop beating yourself up over a crappy sound. It is all practice and progress. Bad tone days are just part of the process of developing as a flute player, but hopefully these tips will help you work through your next one. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, I hope you'll hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more flute tips. Happy fluting, friends!